Hey, it's Hadley with Volcano Lady! I don't know where he gets his dramatic side. So we're back. This is round three of the writing the teak essay. Okay, so we have one lesson on how to get other prompts. We had another lesson on how to go. Actually, this is, this is the fourth one. So we had the first one on how to get at the prompt. Then we had a lesson on how to annotate the passage that we were going through and pulling out important information. Then we wrote our introduction. Okay. And today we're back with segment body four. One. <laughs> yes, yes, he's right. The first paragraph in the body. So we're going to use Teak. So there's already a whole big segment on Teak that maybe you got to see earlier, but we are going to talk about how to Teak a paragraph within an essay. So just to remind you, I'm going to read you the introduction that we wrote. Uh, during our last segment together, it says, remember we have HIT, H-I-T, hook, important background information, and then the thesis statement. How do you, oh, sorry, never mind. Starting over, take two. Do you have pizza, chicken fingers, and boxed potatoes for your school lunch? The author of the first article argues that despite the new guidelines, the food is still the same. The author of the second article argues the food has changed as a result of new guidelines. However, the new guidelines do not help students because they're still getting the same portion sizes and foods. So it's very obvious to me by reading Hadley's introduction that he's going to first talk about how the portion sizes are a problem, even despite the new guidelines. Then he's gonna talk about how the fact they still have those same foods, pizza, chicken fingers, whatever, that's a problem despite the new guidelines. And then most likely he's gonna spend his third paragraph refuting the other um, argument, the other side of the story. So we're gonna get started today just with that first body paragraph. So we're gonna do it about portion sizes. So Hadley, in order to get started, so just to remind everybody, here's my trusty whiteboard. Yeah. Hadley's favorite color is blue, so that's what we're gonna use. And those of you who are following all of my lessons, I've already done a kindergarten lesson and a second grade lesson today. And those were done within those kids' rooms, and now we're in Hadley's room. So I'm just, you know, going around each kid, teaching writing. It's kind of what I do, I like it. So I'm gonna pull this down a little bit so you can see better. So we have T. Hallie, what's the T stand for in T? Topic sentence. And then we have E. Evidence and explanation. Explanation. Concluding sentence. Now, this is T normally. When you're writing an essay, you actually don't have to have a concluding sentence in every paragraph. The concluding sentence is a transition to the next paragraph because you're not done yet. So you can either stop here and just end with the EE, -E. or, and then if you do that, then you would just transition, the, 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 you would use a transition word to start the next paragraph. So you T, T, and then K. <laughs> yes, you don't do the conclusion until the end, right? So this is how each of your paragraphs are going to look. So I'm gonna spread this out actually a little bit more. So we have a little bit more room now that we know we don't have to fit that C on there. Okay, so let's talk about how we could T this paragraph. All right, so Hadley, give me a topic sentence that says something about, you're, you're gonna, these are the things you have to include in the topic sentence. You're gonna have to include the first article, right? Because that's the one we agree with. Yes. And you're gonna have to say something about what that person thinks about portion size, right? Because that's the first point of your thesis statement. So it does shoot out anything and it'll help you make it better. Uh, well. I'm gonna start you out. I'm gonna give you a sentence, Tim. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so in the first. Okay, that's good. Okay. In the first article, it explains their first complaint. Is that okay? First article, it explains the authors. Yes, the authors. First problem. Yes. What is it? You can go ahead and tell me what okay. it is. Okay. Uh, it's that the portion sizes are the same for everyone. In the first article, it explains the author's point of view. Okay, point of view that portions are too, that the portions are same for, okay, or you just wanna stop there? You wanna just stop there? And now you're gonna explain the author's point of view? Sure. Okay, that works. So I was initially thinking Hadley was gonna say, in the first article, the author says the portion sizes are, are, are uh, not differentiated or the portion sizes are the same for everyone. That would have been a fine topic sentence. But now I kinda, I'm kind of starting to see his strategy here. He doesn't wanna give that away yet because he's gonna probably explain it down here. Yeah, sneaky like that. 
Um, this is a good topic sentence too. So there are two different kinds of topic sentences. There are explicit and implicit. Explicit, okay, is when you explicitly say what you're gonna talk about. In the first article, the author does not agree with the guidelines because it still has the same portion sizes. So that's a very explicitly stated. I know exactly what she's gonna talk about down here or he's gonna talk about down here, either way, okay? The way Hadley did it for implicit. Mystery. <laughs> he still gives us a clear topic. I know I'm gonna learn about the author's point of view, right? The author's point of view is in the first article. So it's not that I don't know what I'm gonna learn about, but it's implied that I'm gonna learn the author's point of view. It's implied, it's implicit. I don't know what that view is yet. I gotta read to Sneak figure it out. Snake. Yeah, so you can do explicit or implicit. Either one is a-okay. All right, Hadley, I need evidence to support this author's point of view. Can you, do you have the blue highlighter? Can you find something in here that would give evidence that this author, I'm gonna write this in a different color. What'd you pick, Hadley? Okay, it says a 220 pound high school football player doing a two a day practices is eating the same amount of food as smaller children or children who are not as active. Okay, that is excellent support for what I know to be his, his problem, which is portion. But have you said anything oh, yet? Oh, yeah, nothing about oh. portion sizes. Yeah. So this is a very common mistake that kids make because Hadley knows exactly what the problem is. So he's kind of jumping ahead. He's like, oh, I know this supports the fact that she doesn't think the portions are correct. You're exactly right. But before, so that would be a perfect, a perfect mm -hmm. E. I'm using different colors here. What Hadley just said would be a perfect E for which E? Not the first E. But the second E, because he needs to use the first E establishing what the problem is and explaining it. Then he can give more evidence for it, which is what he just did. And he can explain that. Okay. Got it. Okay. What'd you find? Okay. Another problem with the new guidelines is the portion sizes. Wow. Perfect. Okay. Another, another, read it Hadley. Problem uh -huh. with the new guidelines is the portion sizes. How'd you write so fast? <laughs> Lots of practice. Charlotte just, Charlotte, my six year old, I just did this with her and she constantly was correcting my penmanship. It's uh, very obvious she's in kindergarten. Okay, <laughs> all right. So this is perfect. This is perfect for so many reasons. One is it uses the word guidelines, which just goes back to this whole idea like are the guidelines helping or not? And it establishes the problem, which is the portion sizes. Okay, so let's see how we're doing so far. In the first article, it explains the author's point of view. Can we jump straight to this? Yes. No, we need something. Can we go straight from in the first article? However, or a transition word? We need a transition word. It can be a sentence stem. You can say, in the first article, it explains the author's point of view. You can say, the text states, the author writes, you need some kind of sentence stem that, that cause I can't just start quoting something, right? You do this all the time. You're probably assuming you're yeah. gonna write this. So what would you like to start with? The author, so the author is describes. Okay, the author, stop moving. My kids love to move, I do too, but you know, not when I'm holding a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. The author describes, comma, and then you have this quote, Another problem with the new guidelines is the portion sizes. Now what does Hadley have to do, Hadley? Explain. <laughs> Explain. What does the author mean here? What's the author saying? So let's just talk about it for a minute. Don't use this. What's the author basically saying here? Portion sizes are the food is too small. For a kindergartner? For certain people. Okay. For bigger people. Okay. So say that, say that again. Put that, put that all together. This means or the author's trying to say. This means that the size. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it looks like I can go to the nail salon and get a discount, it says. I don't want to go to the nail salon. Thank you. All right. Six feet, people. <laughs> okay, so the author describes yeah. another problem with the new guidelines is portion sizes. This shows what? Shows that, that larger kids can be getting the same amount of food as smaller or less active people. Okay, 
Now, let me caution Ooh. you about something here that we've talked about in some of my other sessions, okay? A lot of times people really mess this E thing up, all right, this explanation, because they'll say, this shows that the problem is portion sizes. Uh -uh. That is telling me, right? I don't understand it any better. I don't know what's going on. So how you have to say, like, how does it, this has to explain how this relates back to this. So you already know that. You got to tell them. They got to explain some things they don't know. Good. You got to give them something they don't know. Mm -hmm. You might tell them the why or the how or the more additional information. You got it. This has to be big. Okay. This right here is what you need. Everybody in the whole wide world needs to practice the most. So this shows that larger kids are getting the same amount of food as smaller, less active people. Now we're ready for a nut, we're building on our evidence, right? This is a paragraph, we're building on our evidence. So now, now we're going to build on that by finding another quotation that then builds on this fact, gives me more support for why these portion sizes aren't right. Hadley, you already found it, what is it? A 220 pound Just high- Stop for a second. You're exactly right, but I forgot, I made a mistake. I forgot to ask you for your sentence starter. What are you gonna use this time? Transition word. Yeah. So sentence starter or a transition, right? It's actually a little transitional yeah. phrase. So, so you're, you're building on this so you can say what? That hardly seems fair, comma. Ooh, I'm definitely gonna use that. But okay, so listen, the author describes another problem with the new guidelines as portion sizes. This shows that larger kids are getting the same amount of food. <coughs> but you can say, you can say this shows that or you can say this is because. Do you like that better? No. No? Nope? Okay. I was going to say that the reason why she's complaining is because larger kids are getting the same amount of food as smaller, less active people. You could say, for example, you could say, such as, you could say, because you're about to give a very yeah, concrete example, yeah. right? I think I'm going with for example. Okay. For example. Because it indicates that we're giving another, uh, quote. Good. And they, they were going to be an example of something we've already talked about. We're building on it. Paragraphs build, 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 build. So for example, the text says, now read. A 220 pound high, high school football player doing a two a day practices is getting the same amount of food food as smaller children or children who are not as active okay hadley how would you explain that and let me caution you while you're thinking a lot of kids at this point would say, this shows that kids that are bigger are getting the same portion sizes as kids that are smaller. Why would that not be a good idea? We see that. It shows you that already. We right. need to say something that they don't know. Exactly. So what could you say that they don't know yet? So based on this quote, this shows Ooh. that the portions are what? You actually said it a few minutes ago. Mm. Un Remember what you said? And I was like, we'll use that. Ooh, that's good. Let's use that later. Uh, no. Never mind. You don't need to use it. What would you say? How would you explain it? Okay. Oh, well, this shows that she is uh, frustrated. I'm going to say the author since we don't the know for author, sure. Yeah. I just keep saying she too, but we don't know. <laughs> this shows the author is frustrated. Because she says that her, they're there? The author's children hunt for junk food every night right after school. You gotta, if you're gonna, that's a whole new, that's a whole entire new piece of evidence. So if you're gonna use that, you have to connect it back to this. Because they don't, because they don't have enough food that they would if there was different portion sizes. Okay. This shows the author's frustrated because her children come home and what? And search for junk food. And search for junk food because they're still hungry? Mm-hmm. Period.
Now, what you said earlier that I think would be a great way to wrap up this whole section. So not really a concluding sentence, Wait, kind of. two paragraphs? No, this is all one paragraph. And so that's a great question. So we're writing an essay. We're hardcore, right? This is going to be a really good paragraph. It has to have at least two sets of E's. All right? So E-E, E-E. This is all one paragraph. For one? Yes, every paragraph has to have two sets of E's. Okay? Oh. Or it's not a paragraph. Because our children come home and search for junk food because they are still hungry. This is not fair. Okay? That's what you said earlier. Yeah. That this is unfair. So this is kind of like a concluding sentence, some could argue. I'm going to argue that this wraps up this idea enough to then go on to what's going to happen next, what we're going to talk about next. So let's read our first paragraph. In the first article, it explains, actually, you read it, Hadley. Yes. I'll hold, hold it. it. Okay. In the first article, it, it explains the author's point of view. The author describes another problem with the new guidelines is the portion sizes. This shows that larger kids are getting the same amount of food as smaller, less active people. For example, the text, set, uh, text says a uh, 220-pound high school football player doing a, a two-a-day practices is getting the same amount of food as smaller children, as smaller children or children who are not as fit. Oops. Active. 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 She can't read my handwriting. <laughs> this shows the author is frustrated because her children come home and search for junk because they are still hungry. This is not fair. <laughs> Excuse me. Excellent job. Excellent job. So this is going to be Hallie's first body paragraph. We're going to come back and do a second session where he's going to do his second body paragraph. And that one will be about how the foods haven't changed. And that's why the guidelines aren't helpful. Okay. So tune back in for the next section. Woo! Goodbye.